G'day, Dave here, and welcome to December the 6th on our journey towards Christmas. I want to think today about meals, uh, what meal we have at Christmas. What are you looking forward to? Is there a traditional family meal that your family have? I think when I was growing up, we always tended to have a roast, uh, probably roast turkey. I think there might have been some other meats as well. Uh, there were roast vegetables, and then we'd have nuts, and we'd have special sauces and gravy and all kinds of sweets and lollies and things like that. And then there'd be the Christmas pudding. And the Christmas pudding was the favourite thing for me. that have all that fruit in it, and it'd be really rich, and it'd have nice custard all over it. And within the pudding, there would be these coins called sixpences. And the sixpences were okay to put in a pudding because they were made out of silver and they weren't toxic. And I would be able to exchange a sixpence from my grandmother or from my mother for another coin. I think it started off as a five cent swap and eventually kind of found its way to a dollar. What are you looking forward to at Christmas? Does your family have a special Christmas celebration? Is there a right type of meal to have at a Christmas that is Christian? Well, I don't think so. I think we've got great freedom when it comes to what we can have for Christmas. In fact, now I think probably our favorite Christmas meal is bulgogi. That is a Korean barbecue, slithers of, uh, of finely cut meat done on the barbecue with a special sauce and with a nice salad alongside it. That would be our Christmas. But while there's not a special Christmas meal, uh, there was for the people of God, particularly from the time of Moses onwards, a very special anniversary, an annual meal that they'd have at what was called Passover. And the Passover reminded God's people that God had acted to save them. And the first Passover took place back at the time when Israel were slaves in Egypt. And Moses was being used by God to be the rescuer for God's people. And he sent a number of plagues uh, on the nation of Egypt. Uh, but Pharaoh was very obstinate and he wouldn't let the people go. And the last of these plagues is what we know as the plague of the death of the firstborn in every household. And God's angel uh, was to go right through Egypt and the firstborn of every house would be killed unless, and this is the important thing, unless an, a lamb had been sacrificed and the blood of the lamb painted above the doorposts of each household. And the people of Israel did this. They had a special meal. Uh, they cooked this lamb, they roasted it, and then the blood from the lamb was painted above the doorpost and so the angel of death passed over those houses. And that's why this celebration gets known as a Passover. And every year, the people of Israel would celebrate the Passover. That is the time when God rescued them from slavery in Egypt. And it, it finds its way, uh, its origins right back in Exodus chapter 12. And God set in place this kind of lasting celebration. I want to read you these words from Exodus 12, verse 24. It says, Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this ceremony. When your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. And then the people bowed down and worshipped. So the people of Israel would take uh, a lamb. They would uh, cook the lamb. They'd take some special bread, some unleavened bread. Uh, they'd take some bitter herbs. They'd have wine. And they would look back and they would remember the time when God saved them from slavery in Egypt. But what happens when you get to Jesus? In fact... Jesus celebrates a last Passover meal with his disciples. And he doesn't point back to what God did in Egypt. He points to the bread and he says, this is my body. And he points to the, to the uh, wine and he says, this is the blood of a new covenant. In other words, Jesus is saying, we're no longer going to look back to see the salvation that God brought about for Israel. You're now going to look to me to see what salvation is from sin and from death is all about. You see, this Christmas, we will have all kinds of special meals. But let's remember the Passover, in fact, the final Passover 
where Jesus, the sacrificial lamb of God, was slain. He became the sacrifice so that those who trust in him might be set free. See, Christmas is really just the beginning of what Jesus came to do at Easter.